Well, I just got to say it's lovely to be able to come and spend a little bit of time with you today again. And here I am sitting in the kitchen again today because the sun is shining through and what a beautiful place to be. And the clouds are racing across the sky. And you know what I saw this morning, which made my heart glad and sad all at the same time, was a big V of whooper swans heading out north. I imagine they're going back home for the summertime, but it's saying goodbye to our winter friends. So great things all around us if we have our ears and eyes open and God is always speaking into our hearts through, well, through many, many things. Today he's going to speak to us, I hope, through his word. We're coming to the end of Romans 8 and just a couple of verses for us today again. Let me read the two verses. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. What an amazing statement there is there. But it brings this question, first of all, about doubt into our minds. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Is that issue of of doubt? If you hear noises in the background, it's our dog. He's carrying his bone around and dropping it at my feet. So you get the real thing here. It's not a sanitized recording by any means. So thinking about this, who shall bring any charge? There's an echo here of the scriptures way back in Isaiah 50, chapter 50, verse 8. And in that verse, which tells us about the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave up, it says, his back to those who struck him. And then it says, who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Jesus is pointed to in Isaiah and Jesus is pointed to by Paul in Romans as the one who holds us. There is a picture that is used sometimes to help illustrate this type of truth. It's the picture of four climbers, uh, all roped together. And that's a very important thing if you're climbing in certain parts where there is a particular risk of falling and danger. The first one is called Adam. And the, the second one is called Jesus. And when the first Adam fell, he pulled with him everyone. But then those who are roped to Jesus will be held fast by his capacity to hold us, as it were. We fell in Adam, but we stand firm in Jesus. I've had the experience of being roped in, and uh, it's amazing, the experience. Now, the first time you have that experience, it's quite nervous. A few years back, maybe eight or nine, oh, maybe more now, I took our two boys and we went to, to Austria, and with some friends we have there, we went to climb in Germany. And one of our days, we were climbing in a gorge. The gorge was maybe uh, very deep. It was uh, covered on the sides with lots of trees. And around this gorge, there was a metal rope that had been attached so that you could clip into this metal. And then that was what enabled you to climb around the gorge. It really was quite an amazing experience. But the first time, when you clip yourself in, and then you're a bit nervous, you know, but the young man, one of the young men who was with us, he did it, clipped himself in and then just leaned back as far as he could against the, the, his weight against the, the rope. And he was able to just lean out over the gorge. Now, I have to be honest with you, I didn't, didn't want to do it too often. But you know, once you got going and you discovered that this rope would hold you, the whole experience started to become so good. Your nerves left you and you were able to enjoy it. And I think that's... That's a little bit like what we see here. Once we realize that our assurance is based on a very strong basis, it's based on what? Well, it says, who's to condemn? Jesus, the one who died, more than that, who was raised. The resurrection, the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ tell us about the successful completion of the rescue. And having been able to bring us the whole way home. In fact, he goes on to say, then who is interceding for us? 
well, really? Jesus, the one who died and rose again, is representing you and I before his Father? Isn't that incredible? And then it says, who will separate us from the love of Christ? And it lists seven different things that are potential, those circumstances that would be used maybe by Satan to put a distance between us and our Lord Jesus. He names them affliction, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness or neediness, peril, and sword. And and all of those the Apostle Paul had, even including sword, because sword was how he came to the end of his life when he was in Rome. And isn't it wonderful to know that we also can know that all of these things Although they are set by Satan to try to put a distance between us and Jesus, in truth, for God's children, they actually actually bring us closer. This last few days, I've been watching a friend, Brian Welsh, and you may know Brian. Brian is married to Jackie, and Brian is presently, and has been for some years now, going through the experience of living with cancer. And and this is what he said in his little YouTube, and I would encourage you to go and find Brian and put his name in there, and you'll find him on YouTube. And if you have a problem, come back to us and we'll help you. He says, the last four years, he said, I've been diagnosed with 15 to 30 times with tumors, beginning in my kidneys, then three months later in his lungs, then spread to his head, then to his other kidney, then to his throat, then to his lymph nodes, to his face, his muscles, and finally to his brain. Now, what a story. What a journey that Brian has come through. And yet, what he was saying in his YouTube was saying, look, as he quoted from Psalm 107, how the Lord was there, that lovely psalm that describes different situations of people in need, and then when they cried out to the Lord, then the Lord brought them through that, or as Brian says, he has given us peace in our hearts. And so that during this trial that Brian and Jackie have been through, instead of it placing a separation between them and the Lord, it has brought them even closer. Many, many years ago, when I was, I suppose, I'd just been restored in my faith, I was about 19 years old, I was listening to an older preacher preaching in our church then. And he said this, he said, If in your trouble you turn to the Lord, you will be okay and you will find victory. But if you turn away from the Lord in your trouble, there will be no help whatsoever. And it it just seemed to strike a chord within me. And I thought, you know, isn't that really what it's all about? Just leaning in, just leaning in or leaning upon, taking us back to that picture of the rope snapped in, clipped in to the metal and attached to you, secure as ever you will need. And so, isn't it great? It means that when you're roped in, there are, there are some little things, aren't there, that come to mind. You can really put your weight on it. And whatever weights are upon you, they'll never be able to separate. So even though a greater weight comes on you and you think, will the rope hold, will the rope hold? Of course it will hold. Because it's, it is guaranteed on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and on the intercession of the Lord Jesus Christ before your Father in heaven. And then secondly, it, it tells me that I can go higher. I think about the mountain climber. Because you've got this sense of security, you really can reach up into the heights. You can go into places that others would be afraid to go because you've got this secure connection. And You know, you and I can go higher with the Lord. He takes us He takes us to places of blessing and teaching and ministry and encouragement. And then finally, in all of these things, he keeps us really at peace. And I think that's great, isn't it? Does it really matter what we go through as long as we have peace? There are people today who have no troubles in their lives and they're anxious for no reason, really. There are people who who are fit and well and healthy and well provided for And they're anxious, and they have no peace. And yet you have someone like Brian, who has all the reasons in the world, humanly speaking, to be troubled. And Brian, he says, we have peace in our hearts. Because nothing's going to separate Brian or you as God's child from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
So lean into him. Really trust him. He will be there for you. And he is enough. And tomorrow, we're going to think about the last little section, which brings us to a great conclusion for the end of the week. And I trust the Lord will bless you today.